Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen and Dinky Farmer's Country Kitchen. We got cabin fever. Yes, we do. Good place to have cabin fever. You know what? It's cold outside. Mm -hmm. it it's is. supposed to be. It's wintertime. Right. I get it. Yeah. But man, oh man. And it makes me crave soups. And we love good hot and sour soup. Uh huh. And I told you to come up with a recipe when I got home. Why? I did. That's well, good. Okay. It's healthy. And then I'm going to come up with a recipe. This is, and I've, we've had this before and it's delicious. There's yeah, it nothing is. that you can't go to a restaurant and get that you can't make in your own home. Very basic. It's a, it's a chicken broth base with some pork or chicken, whatever you want to use, mushrooms, some vegetables, a little bit of spicy stuff, and boom, you're there. It's good too. It's very easy. Now, this you can do on a slow cooker if you want to put all these ingredients in and walk away and do it for three or four hours. I like to cook it just a little bit because I like the vegetables to have texture. And this yeah. is a texture soup. Now here's what we're going to do. I'm going to try to do this in one pan to make life easier on everybody, less dishes. So we're just going to take some pieces of pork, toss in here, and you can salt and pepper those if you want to. Now I'm just going to take my pork and I'm going to lightly brown it. Now you could do this and not cook the pork, but it would take a lot longer. What did you come up with? Tonight. Do, you, do you want to know, or should I surprise you while you watch me make it? All right, here's the deal. i got to lose 10 pounds. It's okay. plain simple before spring. <laughs> All right. What are you laughing about? Well, it's, this isn't too bad. I mean, just have a little bit of what I'm making then. Mm, I mean, vegetable? Mm, there's no vegetables in it. I'm sorry. Let's see where this is going. <laughs> well, you like cookies, right? Oh, it's so kinda, it's a It's kind of like a cookie, but yeah. it's not really a cookie. You'll like it. How about, like it. how about, how maybe, about, oh. maybe we just do the soup. Okay. Well, you sure? It has pretzels. Pretzels are good for you. Dolly made a pretzel sandwich. Yeah, it's got Dolly. pretzels with it, so. You know, in just a little while, we're going to visit a place where they make soap, goat's milk soap. Now, as I get older, I've noticed that, I, well, I always have been, but really sensitive to perfumes and chemicals and Allergies, things like that. stuff like that. I, am, I just can't take it. So I found that there is this goat's milk soap with all good natural ingredients. We're going to go to Stanford and see how they make this all natural soap. Interesting. It is interesting. I'd like to see that. All right, our pork is lightly done. Looks good. Now, I'll tell you what I want to do here. If you will, Nikki, mm -hmm. while I'm doing the rest of this stuff, think about just strips like that. Okay. And then we might even cut those in half. But everything in here is going to be like, like a strip. And you get that same kind of consistency. I'm going to go ahead and take some chicken broth. And you can use 28, 32 ounces depending on how thick you want it. Now on these onions, Nikki, what I'm gonna do is just take a top slice like this. Think about little strips. I'm gonna let that play out like about right here. And then we have those pieces like that. All right. So think about just long strips. How many you want of those? You know what, I have never measured this recipe. So let's say that we're gonna use probably just enough to float on the top. So I'd say five or six cuts across the onion, which and that'll give you enough of that onion flavor and the onion consistency. And again, we're not going to go really long on this. All right, I'm going to go ahead and toss this pork in. And you can use chicken, too, if you like. All right, then we're going to take our strips of pepper, put those in there, really, really thin. And slowly but surely, you're going to see that start to look like what you get at the restaurant. We're going to take two teaspoons of soy sauce, Mix that up. Smells good. Let's take some, cut some long, thin strips of carrots. We're going to take bamboo shoots, half a cup. Now, you could use, if you like the consistency of water chestnuts, you could go half and half. Use a quarter cup of water chestnuts, a quarter cup of bamboo shoots. So our water chestnuts, our bamboo shoots, we're just going to basically cut those in half. All right, while she's cutting, I'm going to, I've already got my shiitakes cut up. I'm going to do, I don't know. Combined a total of three to five ounces of mushrooms. Look at these oyster mushrooms. That's Smell good. It. Go ahead and cut me some of those up in strips, if you will. Now that just like this. That's just for consistency and for taste. You can switch up the mushrooms here. Those look good. Those are good. Coming to here now. If you'd like, let's take a piece of celery. I'll tell you what, too. Let's use some of this. Right. Go ahead and go ahead and finally chop that up. Best part of celery right there. Toss just a little of that in. Now let's take a stalk. 
And Nikki, if you will, cut those up into about these size, really thin strips. Another thin this way. Mm -hmm. Now, take a look at this right here. This is chili paste. That's where the magic comes in right there. Super hot. Well, it is warm. That's where we're gonna take a heaping teaspoon, plop it in there. That's Run. where your heat comes from. Good. And if you want more or less, that's up to you. That looks good. <laughs> it's getting there. Smelling pretty good too. All right, if you'll hold that there, we're gonna go three tablespoons. Now here's your kind of tart taste. Three tablespoons of rice vinegar, or rice wine vinegar. There's a couple steps left. We've got some tofu sitting over here and some other things we have to do, but I am fascinated by natural stuff. No, you are. And I'm using goat soap now. Yes, you are. Jessica told me, we're talking about natural soap. Yes. I like that. You know what I find, and, and people are gonna call me, uh, you know, all kinds of names, but the older I get, all my buddies at work are gonna make fun of me, but any kind of chemicals, and I, this, I'm not on my soapbox. Right. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not trying to say you should do this, but this is a choice for me. Right. And I think as we get older, I remember I had a professor um, who told me, he said, I'm not gonna put anything on my body, such as deodorant and things like that, unless I could put it in my mouth and eat it. And that's stuck in my head. Right. I'm not eating your soap. You could. You could. You could. After the lie gets out. We'll talk about that later. Right. But you know what? We're at Kentucky Soaps and Such yes. here in Stanford. Beautiful little town. And we're going to talk about how you go through this process to make goat's milk soap. Right. Everything's natural. Yep. No nasty, weird perfumes right. that have letters. They can't 26 read. 26 letters, exactly. That's right. I like that. Tell me how you start. How do you start this whole process? Give us, give us kind of an overview. Our soap is basically made up of very simple ingredients that you can, when you read the box, you can pronounce them. Um, that's a palm, olive, and coconut oil. And then you're going to see a rainwater and sodium hydroxide, which is lye. You collect your own rainwater we right do. here. Right out back here. And third part is our fresh goat's milk that we get locally. Which is right here. Yep, from our local, we have a local farmer here that brings it to us. All right, I'm gonna stand out of the way and let you do your thing. Um, so now I'm gonna be taking um, our, our three main oils, the palm, olive, and coconut oil. And basically it goes into this big, big pot and how I know that I've got enough is it's on a scale. So it's just weighed. So I'll go ahead and do that and show you that. So this is our tea tree. That's we the use oil. Yeah, we Let's use. Smell it again. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, and that's 26 ounces of the essential oils go into the soap. All of our soap is good for dry skin, better than what any you know commercial soap would be, just because it's made without detergent, right. and that's huge. Detergent will dry you dry you completely out. Um, but the tea tree, like I said, it's got a little, it's more of a drying, so it's good for oily, more mm -hmm. oily gotcha. skin. Yeah. So I've got my oil in there, and I'm just going to stir that for a few more minutes. Are we getting close? Yeah, we're going to add the milk now. And you say that this fairly fatty. Yeah, Go is. that is one of the reasons that you use the goat's milk is just um, has a, f a higher fat content. Mm -hmm. So that just equals more moisturizing. Looks like custard. All right, so it's definitely ready to pour up. And you um, say this makes how many, 300? 350. 350. Yeah, it's, it is kind of the consistency of Pancake batter, cake batter. But yeah, so this is ready and I'm gonna pour it in here. You've got two of your molds ready to go into the 
refrigeration mm -hmm. unit for four mm -hmm. to five days. Yeah, we'll cut, um, today's Thursday, we'll cut this soap next uh, Tuesday. Um, and then it'll be sufficiently molded and, and in that firm yeah. enough form to cut it. Right. Let's go cut some. Yeah, let's right. do it. Now look, this is your baby. <laughs> this is a beautiful piece yep. of soap. Yeah. Yeah. Smells good. Feels like soap. Yeah. So at this point, you just cut it. It's not. It's not done. You still have to set the drying room. Right. right. So it's basically just on a platform, mm -hmm. and I'm going to move this platform underneath the cutter. Um, the cutter is not hot or sharp. I think a lot of people think that. Um, you know, it's got to be hot to melt through it. So or when you sharp. said cheese, it's like a cheese yeah, cutter. Yeah, it's basically. like Velveeta, just like a Velveeta kind of, you know, blend. You ready? Um, yeah. So I've just basically put this into place, um, and you kind of secure them in there. And then this is all. Um, it's an air. It's used on air, so it's just an air, kind of air compressor cutter. You like? You, you'll see. It just barely. <laughs> What do you use the little scraps to come off the side? Um, we keep them. Just kind of let them put them on a put them on a tray and <laughs> let them dry out. We'll give away samples, give people little that's a good pieces. Idea. Yeah. So anyway, this is uh, this is the first cut. So that's your and there's two cuts. So next step, you cut it sideways, then boom, you've got bars. Yep. We just carefully place them on here. Um, a little bit apart so they get plenty of air in between mm -hmm. them and that goes into our dry, to the drying room. And how and long? It's, it's 30 to 45 days. We like to leave them. We I mean, can definitely leave it in there longer. There's no expiration on soap. So the longest part of your process is the drying process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then once it's done and out and ready, it goes over to the packaging table where yeah. you just box it up by hand, I guess. Right. So everything yeah. here is done by hand. There you have it. Yep. You know, fairly simple process, but, but I'm sure it's a old, old tradition. I'm sure that you've learned these things from different people. But for so long, I would go buy everything off the shelf, not even reading the label, whether it was meat, whether it was vet canned right. vegetables. You just don't know. Right. We have the opportunity to know now. Right. And now we know what you do, and I want to thank you very much for thank having us you. out. Thank you. I'm Lardo. And I'm Burley. And, and we're, we're the, the Moron, Moron Brothers. Brother. Got a frog in my throat. You know, Tim Farmer was telling me that he got him some chickens and he go raise chickens, sell eggs, make a lot of money. Yeah. And, well, he read in the magazine, farm magazine, where if he feed them silkworms, they'd lay better. Yeah. So, uh, I, I seen him, Ernie. So been about six months, and I seen him up there. I said, Tim, how you chickens done? He said, I've been feeding them silkworms. I said, well, how they done? He said, well, they're laying good, but all the eggs got pantyhose in them. Do the roof or something. All right, then. Down by the pond, she's giving it.
eggnog. We got eggnog. Said the rooster. Came on the farm. She give me an eggnog. We got eggnog. Said the rooster. Came on the farm. Had an ain't. Didn't have no kids. Uh oh. Had an ain't. Didn't have no kids. And then the rooster came on the farm, caught her aunt out behind the barn. Grand fried rooster, grand fried rooster, said the rooster came on the farm. The hand fried rooster, the hand fried rooster, said the rooster came on the farm. Smells good. Mm -hmm. Looks good. I'm telling you, I'm excited. Can I eat it? Let's go ahead. There's a, there's a final step you have to do to thicken it up cornstarch and water. Two tablespoons of each. That'll lighten the color up a bit. Let's mix that up there and let it thicken up. Sesame oil. Go ahead. One, two. I'm telling you what. That looks good. Looks good. Smells looks pretty good, good too. Now we've already cut some tofu, but basically we're gonna take that and cut it into pieces about like this. Well, about four ounces. And just take these and cut them up in little squares, like such. You want it to be perfect. I'm telling you what, anything that's out there, you can make yourself. Now, one little thing that you can do, if you like the taste, I think it adds, you, you don't wanna overdo it. Just a little Worcestershire sauce, boom, that much. You know what, we could let this cook for a long time, let everything get, I want the crunch. I like crunch. I like the consistency. I like crunch. Let's dip a bowl up here. Ooh, lots of chunks. Let's take just a little bit of green onion. Just a little bit right there. You talk about a spoon full of texture and flavor. You all did yourself again. That's amazing. Mm. Cleans your sinuses That's up. really good. Mm. How about mm. we can eat that mm. whole pot? And it's probably a good time to tell you about our Facebook page, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Like it, check out, see where we're going, what we're doing. Also, visit our website, timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Look at our shows on YouTube there. We've done a bunch of them. Try some grub you've never tried before. There's my chocolate that Kelly got me. Yeah? Look, those are tooth marks. Who did that? I don't know. Hey, hey, hey. Do you know I, all the benefits? I know. Of dark chocolate? That's why I'm making this tonight, because this will be so good for you. This is how you top this mm. off. <laughs> so, would you still love me if I look like this all the time? I do. Would you, you give me a kiss? Uh -huh. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. That's Isn't nice. That you look good. <laughs> Thank you very much. I absolutely love chocolate, and it is good and, for you. Yes. So, well, I see what you've done again with cream cheese and the butter. So we start with butter, correct? Yeah, we're gonna melt a stick of butter. So what you're saying is this is kind of kind of a cookie dough. It's just a cookie type dough. consistency. Yeah, you can call it. Can we make it a dip? Dip. You can call it a dip or a dessert or. All right, it's looking like we're you're kind of getting, getting there. I'm gonna go ahead and add some brown sugar for you. How much brown sugar? That is a third of a cup. A third of a cup. And as soon as that's all melted in, we're gonna shut it off and add some vanilla. All right, that's looking pretty good. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and let's turn that off, and we're gonna pull it off the burner and add a teaspoon of vanilla. All right. Is that a teaspoon? Mm-hmm. It's about a teaspoon. All right. I got a package of cream cheese. Cream cheese. Let it kind of get to be room temperature. All right. We're going to go ahead and use our mixer to... All right. We got a cup of powdered sugar. Ooh. Let's slowly add in. It's healthy. All right. If you want to slowly start pouring that in for me. You want all of it. See how simple that was? You just keep on putting it in your mouth, right? That's right. I'm going to go ahead and take this out of here. I've got three quarters of a cup of chocolate chips. Okay. I'm can't just going to mix it in. Go wrong. I see how it's kind of looking like cookie dough here? Oh, yeah. And I got pretzels because I thought kind of a salty. Don't you salty think that'd be good? Sweet yeah, dip. I want to dip a pretzel into my cookie dough if I'm going to eat it raw. What do you think? Oh, man. 
How can I resist that? Mm. So it's kind of like eating raw cookie dough, but without the egg, right? So it's not bad for you. And this is where your chocolate comes in. Can I use it? Just scrape up. This is the end I'm chewing on, so you can do the other end. I can end. use the other end. Let's just make it look yeah, pretty. Yeah, it needs think? more chocolate. Yeah. I thought it might look, make it look pretty. You sure we don't want to melt a stick of butter over top of that? We could. Oh, my, stop. Does that look cute? I got to have some of this. There's our dip. Our look at that. So it's a, but it's a cookie dough dip. Do what you think. Wow. Isn't that good with the salt? Oh, man. Meanwhile, at this point, it's pretty much just all about... Good times. Good friends. Good eats. That's good eats right there. You know what? How in the world am I going to exercise all this all? Will you do a workout video with me? A workout video? Well... Like Jane Fonda? Well, it's not really a workout. It's yoga. So it's like for older people like us, and it's stretching. It's going to... Yoga. Yoga. Please. It's, I heard it's really good for people our age. After you eat cookie dip, you're supposed to do yoga. So what do you have, like an instruction manual? I just happened to bring it up here <laughs> with me. You did not. You can get these any... I don't know if this is even a good one or not, but you know what? Yoga. And look at She's not... She's just kind of stretching. I think if we could work together... Well, how's she going again? Like this. <laughs> so... So... I think we need to try I'm this. I'm wearing an apron. Uh-huh. I'm on a cooking show. Right. I just put tofu in something. Right. And now I'm doing yoga. What I, are my Marine Corps buddies going to say? Just don't tell them. You'll be, the, you'll be able to touch your toes in a week. We'll see. I'll see cookie dough first. You are Did you hear my knee pop? No, you sound, you're doing really good. Really, really good. Nick. Breathe slowly, love. Help me get up. <laughs> Help me get up. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.